So, Caroline, the idea of converting icebergs to drinking water has been around for a while, but there's something different with what's happening now. Walk us through that. Um, yeah, the idea has been around since at least the 1940s, but um, what's interesting about this particular plan is it is spearheaded by a man named Nicholas Sloan, and he's a marine salvage expert, so he has a lifelong uh, worth of experience just doing amazing things like rappelling onto burning super tankers, doing remote uh, cleanup in of oil and cargo that's pouring out into the ocean. And um, and he also, interestingly, has funding. Um, he, he says the tow might uh, cost more than $200 million, and he has financial backers who want to take on all the risk as long as South Africa will take the water. Caroline, I've got to reinstate. This is such a phenomenal story. The idea that you would tow, what is it, a 1,000 meter long, 500 meter wide, 250 meter <laughs> deep, weighing 125 million ton iceberg across from Antarctica or Arctica all the way to South Africa is quite amazing. All to allow, of course, people to start to be able to have baths once again, to be able to use their water. 200 million actually doesn't seem that much, but what's the cost to where you take the iceberg from? I mean, what, are there any negative repercussions to this? Well, so they would be taking an iceberg that has already broken off from the Antarctic landmass and that is uh, that has already traveled quite a distance that will be flowing with the currents and ultimately melting into the ocean. So uh, the glaciologist I spoke with said that if you take one of these out of the ocean, it is just a matter of the freshwater melting in Cape Town rather than hmm. in, in into the seas. Okay, so I, I understand that. I mean, the, the skeptic in me wonders, even though Caroline gave us this great description of what it might look like and the pictures that would generate and the video and the achievement that would be, why not desalinate the water that surrounds uh, the area and, and perhaps use that as, as drinking water? Is that a possibility? I, th I think a lot of people are wondering the same thing, but desalination is actually quite problematic. Scientists are working on improving it, but it's incredibly energy intensive and expensive, and it is 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 terrible for the environment. In, in, typically, you're producing more chemical lace brine than you are p pot producing potable water, mm. and that is going back into the oceans and creating these ocean deserts where it just kills everything. So that's not a great option and um, probably what we should be doing is taking better care of the fresh water that we do have, mm. but um, we haven't been very good at that so far. Your story paints an amazing picture of Mr. Sloan and what he's like and, and also some of the challenges that he's likely to face, high waves, high winds, storms. How soon, therefore, could this phenomenal feat occur? So Sloan says he'll need a, only about six months to prepare this mission. Um, he already is talking with all sorts of contractors who would help build the enormous nets and equipment that he would need. Um, but he says the tow can only happen in November or December when the Antarctic is, uh, the climate there is somewhat less ferocious because you're typically dealing with five to 15 meter waves and high winds. Um, so so they're waiting for <laughs> a go ahead from the South African government. And, and the water situation there is, you know, it's a little, it's, it's quite a bit better than it was, although people still have, are, are limited to only 70 liters of water per person per day, which is not very much at all. Mm. Um, but I think the government will, will opt for cheaper rainwater if they possibly can. So we'll see. We'll see right. what happens.